Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Thursday 10 a.m. Technique Live at the Summer Vacation Online Crop. We're going on a road trip. It's our summer vacation road trip. I don't know about you, but there's nothing more exciting than a road trip. Well, except for maybe, you know, Hawaii or something, but uh, yeah, we can't get there by road. So, I hope you guys are super excited about this crop weekend. It has been, um, it feels like it has been a long time waiting for this crop to happen. I don't know whether June was just long or whether it's because um, the first weekend was kind of not on the... Um, on the time that we normally would go and let me just see I'm trying to find my <laughs> trying to find the video there we go we finally got it um, my computer wasn't working for me that's nothing new good morning Sue nice to see you're watching if you're popping on to watch just say hello or howdy so I know you're here good morning Grace watching as you're stitching good double Multitasking. Uh, crafters are good at multitasking, aren't they? And Grace is a teacher, so she's really good at multitasking. Okay, this morning, have any of you ever tried watercolor painting? Anybody? <laughs> and if you have tried watercolor painting, how did it go? I've taken classes and it was fun and I learned a lot and some of my things turned out and others didn't and uh, hey Michelle from work Shh, we won't mention anything good morning Nima good morning Sue how's everybody doing um so if you've tried it and it worked yay and if you tried it and it didn't work eh, you're not alone um so I am going to show you kind of a cheater way of creating a watercolor look with a stamp and a water brush okay now I have to thank Karen I don't she she won't be on yet because it's like in the middle of the night in Australia but Karen asked me about a technique that she saw and she wanted to know if it would work with our inks and stuff and um, I said yes it will work with our inks but we have to use the right kind of paper so I gave her, I showed her, I made a little video for her to just show her the difference between one type of paper versus the other and how, how it worked better on one than the other. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So, <laughs> so I thought that, um, yeah, I might as well show everybody. So hey Sue, nice to see you're watching. I think I said hey again, but you love watercolor painting. That is awesome. And Michelle, I'm awful. I'm at work. Hopefully the boss doesn't walk past like last time. So I just wanted to show you my nails. I did them especially for the crop. And I showed them to my daughter. And I'm like, look, look at my nails. Did you like my nails? Because she didn't do them this time. Uh, wonder of wonders. She was busy having a tea party with her brothers. So I showed her my nails. And she's like, Mom, they're so boring. <laughs> then I said, what about now? I did my thumbs to look like a little beach. I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well, but I've got the waves coming on the shore, and there's one starfish there and two starfish here. Yeah, so then she was a little more impressed. But anyway, I thought I would go with the beachy theme. Hey, Heather, nice to see you joining. Jody's at work. <laughs> you and Michelle are both at work. I love it. It's awesome. Okay, so we won't keep you guys too long since you're at work. So as I said, I'm going to be doing a watercolor technique using a stamp. And the stamp that I'm going to use, and anybody who joined me for the catalog launch party will know about this very cool stamp set. It's called Writing in the Sand. It's from our brand new July-August catalog. And it is so cool. And it turns out looking like a photograph. I'm wondering, you know, I didn't grab... Let me see if I can grab the card that I made. Nope. You know what? I think I already mailed it out. <laughs> but 
but I recreated one of the cards from the catalog. So let me grab the catalog to show you. And it ends up looking just, there it is. Look at that. It looks just like a photograph of the ocean. And it is so cool. We made the uh, the example on the left there, the see you soon. And it is so beautiful. But we're going to take that stamp and we're going to treat it like a watercolor painting. Because I thought, you know what, it's already 50% there. Let's ju go, just go ahead and take it that little step further. So we're going to use this stamp set. We're also going to be using um, a, this little sentiment down here from the stamp of the month. It's called Voice of the Sea, which has a beautiful, well, all my stamps are kind of dirty and misplaced. But there's a, a sea turtle and a fish and a seagull and a crab and some underwater goodness, and some shells, and some sentiments. This is the stamp of the month for July. And so we're going to use this time to relax sentiment. And then we're also using, now this is important, to create this look um, of faux watercolor, you're going to need to use watercolor paper. That's very important. Whatever kind of watercolor paper you have should work. Uh, this is the one that close to my heart sells. It's the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Cardstock from Ranger. And um, so that's the one I'm going to be using. But I also have, you know, my my regular watercolor paper that I get from Desairs. And, <laughs> and um, I'm sure it would work on that too. But uh, for today, that's what I'm using. And I'm also going to need something to spray water and uh, some kind of paint brush. I'm using my water brush, my small round water brush, to move the water, okay? Because we're doing watercolor, faux cheater watercolor, but that's what we're doing. So the first thing we need to do is to get our messy mat out, because we're going to make a mess. We're also going to need some inks. And so the color combination that I'm going to use for the water is going to be Harbor, Lagoon, and Glacier. And those are the three colors that, um, that I also used on the card that's in the catalog. These are the three colors that they use for that. And it looks really cool, so I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> Sue says she loves to watercolor on cardstock with stamps for cards. Yeah, not so great freehand. I hear ya. I hear ya. And this technique that, uh, that Karen had asked me about... It was actually done with um, floral outline stamps, and then you move the, wa the ink around a bit, and it looks so cool, but I thought, you know what, it's going to work for this, for this one too, just to give you that look like you painted a watercolor uh, on your card. So let's grab a piece of the watercolor cardstock. Now, you will notice that mine has torn edges, and you know what, even when I do watercolor painting, I tear the I tear my watercolor because I get it in great big, massive sheets. I think they're like uh, 17 inches by something else. They're great big sheets, and then I only watercolor on small pieces. But they don't fit in my paper trimmer, so I always tear them, and it's just kind of a look. And I thought on the front of a card, it's nice to have that sort of shabby, torn look when you're doing sort of nautical, oceany type things. So we have got our torn paper, and this was torn just a little bit smaller than four by five and a quarter. So it was um, three and seven eighths by um, five and five and an eighth, something like that. <laughs> anyway, you got to do it big enough to stamp. So if you're not comfortable tearing it before you stamp, then stamp your image and then you can tear the edges and it'll just fit whatever you whatever you stamped. So we're going to start by doing something messy. We're going to take our lagoon, which is our middle color, and I'm going to take the ink pad and I'm going to rub it right on my messy mat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use the edge to do this because I don't want um, a great big wide piece. I want just a bit. So let me see. I'm going to just use the top edge of it and I'm going to rub it on my mat like that. Okay? So I've just sort of got a narrower strip of inky goodness of lagoon. And then I'm going to come in with my harbor, which is my darkest color. 
and I'm going to rub it on my mat above that. So I'm going to start rubbing above and then work my down my way down so that I'm fairly close. I don't want to run right over the lagoon per se because um, I don't necessarily want the ink <laughs> to get onto my harbor but you know pretty close and then I'm going to do the same with the glacier. Now if you don't have an all-purpose mat for doing this you could um, use a piece of acetate, you could use a piece of plastic packaging, you could use a piece of um, cling wrap, <laughs> you know, anything just to give yourself a surface. And so now we've got our three stripes of color, our harbor, our lagoon, and our um, glacier. And these are just our regular inks. These aren't distress oxides or anything like that. They're just our regular inks. Okay, so harbor, lagoon, and glacier. I'm going to kind of move them out of the way. And then I'm going to take my little sprayer and I'm going to add some water because we said we were doing watercolor. So we're going to add some water to our um, colors there. And then we need to get our stamp. So we're going to start with this top part of the writing in the sand stamp because that's the water portion. So we'll get that out just like this. Do, 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 do. There we go. And I'm going to keep my foam here nice and handy because that's good for stamping on. There we go. And let me also pick this up with my big old block. It's a big stamp, so you need a big block. Okay, so we've got this wet. Now what we want to do is we want to line our stamp up so that we have harbor at the top and lagoon in the middle and glacier at the bottom. And we're just going to go plop, 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 plop. And we can move it up a tiny bit and down a tiny bit so that some of the colors blend into each other. And then we're going to take it over to our watercolor paper and we're going to plop it right down on there, just like that. And you're probably going to think it's going to be a hot mess, and it might be. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just going to take our water brush now, if I can get it off, and I probably should have added a little bit more pressure, but we get our water brush going, there we go, and we can just take that ink that has now been transferred, and we can just kind of glide it around and spread the color and create that watercolor effect and all we're doing is moving it side to side and getting it to the edges and then if we want we can kind of swish it off a little bit and then we'll pick up this lagoon color and I love how the watercolor paper holds the ink where it's stamped but it also lets you move the ink that was excess right so then we can just move it all around like that. And then we're getting into the glacier. So we can kind of wipe that off. I can use my hand sometimes. And then we can grab the glacier. Now the thing is, if you tried this with white daisy cardstock or regular cardstock, you wouldn't get the movement. Okay? Now this one, because it sat for a while and I was talking, it's not moving a lot. If it doesn't, you can grab some from there and kind of move it around like that. Isn't that fun? You're kind of creating your own watercolor look <laughs> just with using your stamp. And then, let me kind of clean that off. I might even add a little bit more harbor up here. And then we can go ahead and stamp our sand. Let me grab a wipe to clean up our mess. Now, if you were gonna do um, maybe two of these, you'd go ahead and do all the um, do all the inking at the same time while some of that's still there. But I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it off. And I'm gonna grab my toffee. So here's my toffee. 
And this one, I can just go ahead and stick it down, rub it around, get some ink transferred, and spray it with some water. Like that. And I also need to switch out my stamp. I'm just going to set this stamp off to the side because I haven't actually cleaned it yet. This is one time where I'm going to clean my stamp because it gets pretty goopy. <laughs> and then we can take our other one, which is the sand portion, and load that up on our block. And we can stamp it down into that messy color we've got going on there. And then just line it up and stamp it right on our card. There we go. And the toffee, don't worry. I know it looks like a hot mess. The toffee comes out looking like some sort of green goo. <laughs> but don't worry. It will work. And you just want to... I like to do a lot at the edge, like this, because I always think that the sand is going to be wettest and darkest where the waves come in, right? But then you can kind of move some of these parts around a little bit, give it a little bit more defined edge there, and that's it. And then we let it dry. We can speed along the drying process if we want. Um, by using a heat tool, but we don't have to, we can let it dry. So while it's sitting there doing its thing, drying, we can go ahead and work on the rest of the card. So we'll scooch that to the side, we'll scooch my dirty stamp to the side, and we will bring in the Versamat so we don't have to look at all the glare. <laughs> we'll just keep that off to the side. And let's bring in our card base. So I'm using just a four and a quarter by five and a half white daisy card base. And then I've got a piece of the glacier paper. And I've cut it exactly to fit the front of my card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half, which I said already. <laughs> and I'm going to use the dark side, which is the true color side. Just going to add some adhesive to this. And as you watch, out of the, that's why I'm leaving it in the frame here. As you watch, you will see that the um, that toffee will start looking less green. I think it's just when you mix it with water, it kind of separates out all of the sort of the chemical components of the ink. <laughs> so it has to have a moment to kind of regather itself as it dries. But you do get some fun variations in the color that you normally wouldn't get. And even you get a bit of graininess. And that's really fun because that definitely looks like sand. And it definitely looks like watercolor. Watercolor paint. Some of the colors are very grainy. Um, I took a whole class on why that happens. It's very cool. <laughs> and then we've also got a piece of Harbor cardstock, which is the darkest color we use. So we're using the lightest color and the darkest color of our inks. And this was cut to four by five and a quarter. And I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to rough up the edge. Do a little bit of edge distressing. You could do sanding, um, any kind of technique that you wanted to add a little bit of distress. I think it just looks nice with the torn edges of the watercolor paper. So who's watching me distress and who's watching the watercolor to see what's happening? <laughs> the fun thing about watercolor paper is your image kind of morphs over time. The longer the, the paint sits, or the ink in this case, sits on the paper, it really does change. And sometimes when you first do it, you think, ew, yuck. And then you look at it 20 minutes later and you're like, oh, <laughs> that's cool. So I think we'll try this um, technique again sometime using things like outline um, stamps like Karen had asked me about. 
and show you how that works with uh, the outline stamps and then pulling the ink to create watercolor effect. It's super fun, super cool. And I can't remember the name. She had sent me the example from another crafter. And I, for the life of me, I can't remember now what the name was um, that she sent me. But I'm sure other people have done it too. <laughs> it, usually once an idea picks on, lots of people try it, right? So then we can just go ahead and center this on our card like that. But we need a sentiment to go on here as well. And so I decided to use that little sentiment from the um, stamp of the month that says time to relax. Let me just grab that. This is, it's got a couple of sentiments on here. It's got hello, thanks. <clears throat> the voice of the sea speaks to me, sending good vibes your way, and then this time to, and then relax. So I thought that would be a nice one. Just a very simple, tiny sentiment to go on something that's just so beautiful. And, you know, that feeling of sitting by the water and listening to the waves. Definitely time to relax. So let's pick up time two. And then we'll pick up relax. And hopefully get them, get them lined up. I'm going to try that again. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Sometimes you have to give it two or three times before you get it lined up how you want it, right? There we go. Time to relax. And then I've got just a teensy tinyest strip of Harbor cardstock. Let me see. It's three eighths of an inch. Um, the length doesn't matter because we're going to trim it down based on how we how we feel about everything. But we're going to do some white heat embossing on here. So I'm just going to quickly add some uh, starchy stuff from my anti-static pouch to keep the um, embossing powder from sticking to everything because you don't necessarily want it to stick to everything and then let me grab a scrap piece of paper because that's always important as well for catching all the little bits and we also should have our foam under here for a good stamping surface. What else do we need? Embossing powder. Wait, embossing powder? The catchphrase around close to my heart is when in doubt, embossing white. <laughs> and then we also need our Versamark ink for picking up the embossing powder. So we're going to ink, ink, ink. Now let me see if I can line this up. with my head in the camera probably. Time to relax. Sprinkle on the powder. Tap, tap. Give it a little blow. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, a, you know, blowing on your dice for good luck. I always tend to go <laughs> on my heat embossing. I'm pretty sure you probably don't need to do that, but I always do. And then we dump the rest back into the jar. Close everything up. Oops, upside down. And then we can go ahead and use our heating tool. Now, I got smart, and I ordered a pair of the tweezers. So now I can hold my little things with the tweezers instead of getting my hands warm. So I'm just going to heat up my heat tool for just a moment. And then I can go ahead, and you will see this embossing powder go from dry and powdery. And then it's going to go to shiny and white. So fun. And I always do it up off my work surface. For one thing, it's more effective. It goes quicker because the air can swirl around the whole project. And also, I, you know, I won't have a chance to do any damage to anything on my table, either the finish on my table or anything, because it's not there. <laughs> so that's all we had to do for that. And then if you want to get that little bit of um, embossing, uh, anti-static pouch off because it's a little bit powdery I always just rub it on my pants just give it a little swipe on your pants and it takes the excess powder off I'm sure there's a you know a more proper way of doing it but that's how I always do it let's check on our watercolor it's looking good and sometimes you can give it a little 
been because the nature of watercolor is you're adding moisture. So now that there's been moisture added to the top, it never goes through to the back of watercolor um, unless you like drown your watercolor. Um, but because the top fibers have gotten wet and then, you know, they expanded and then they shrunk, um, it always wants to do a swoop. You can um, minimize that by using a bit of heat tool on the back and front. Um, some people even just spritz the back of their watercolor paper with a bit of water so that it evens it out, but it's not it's not necessary. Um, but yeah, we can just go ahead and attach this onto our card now. I'm going to use a few extra pieces of adhesive, and that is because watercolor paper is a little bit more fibery than cardstock, so you want to make sure you know that it's on there good plus it'll help with any of that bending that you might see keep it all in one place and just remove all of that this is really a simple card there's not a lot of extra things that we have to do to it and then you can just go ahead and line that up in the center of the harbor card stock just like that. Is it starting to look like you created your own watercolor? I think that's just so cool. <laughs> and then we can decide how much of this we want. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off there and trim a little bit off there like that. And why don't we go ahead and distress the edges of this as well just a smidge. So it fits in with everything that's happening. I like that this is such a fun um, sort of scene that you've created with the watercolor faux watercolor technique that I don't think it needs a lot of extra. It doesn't need a lot of um, embellishing. It just needs something because it looks so serene, right? You don't want to distract from it. So we've got our time to relax. We've distressed the edges a little bit. We can go ahead and add that on there. And then I thought for a little bit of extra, because sometimes we just can't not have a little bit of the extra. Um, I'm going to move that down just a smidge. Time to relax. I love all these grainy white parts that are still showing. That is one of the hardest things to maintain when you're watercoloring is to maintain some of the white paper. So because we started out with the stamp that already had variations and we added water, we were able to maintain some of that white negative space. And um, I think that's so cool because that's hard to learn. <laughs> and so the way that we did it, it just happened naturally. <laughs> And I was just um, realizing that I haven't looked at the comments lately. <laughs> so, so I apologize for that. I've been so busy playing. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sue, love to watercolor and cardstock with stamps. Oh, yes, we read that. It is. It's a rustic look. It's so very, like, shabby, cottagey, beachy. Gonna have to try it. <laughs> Yes, you can certainly go ahead and Sue was saying she would be stealing the excess ink off the mat. And you can certainly do that. You could take um, other stamps and and have other things on the side to stamp. Definitely, you don't need to waste it. Or if you want to try, um, just um, grab a, you know, a circle of the watercolor paper and just dab it in there and create like a little porthole or something. Absolutely, no need to waste the ink. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mary, nice to see you're watching. And Ina's here too. Yay, Deborah. Yes, the watercolor paper is certainly fun. All right, so I've got my gold loose sequins here, and I thought I would just add a little bit because we've got this nice sand happening here. So we'll add a couple, maybe three down here. And then let's also add some sequins up in the water like this there we go 
and I've got my pickup tool. So let me see. I want some of the, in the gold sequins, there's like really shiny gold and then there's sort of matte gold. So I think I want the matte gold ones because I think that will look nicer in the sand. And I love this pickup tool. I sharpened it up today so it would be nice and fresh. And it just picks up those little sequins. I mean, my arthritis fingers would just never do that. <laughs> they just wouldn't accommodate that. So then let's grab some of the iridescent sequins from in here and add those on the water. I love that about these um, sequin mixes, that there is so much variety. There's little stars, there's little iridescent-y ones, and those look fun in the water. Just add a little bit of sparkle, because as we know, the water does sparkle in the sunshine, and uh, so why not play that up with a few sequins? And one more. There we go few little sequins and that's it that is our cute cheater watercolor card created with that writing in the sand stamp set and mixing up uh, harbor lagoon and glacier on our mat spritzing with a bit of water stamping and then using our water brush to move it around and then also using the toffee for the sand doing the same technique torn edges and distress edges to give it that sort of seaside look and isn't that fun our own created watercolor easy peasy so easy <laughs> so i hope that um you guys give this a try you know what try it with different stamps too why not i would love to see what you make so if if you give this method a try pop a picture in the comments and i would love to see it all right have a great day. Toodaloo. The challenges have been posted already for today, so take a look at that. And game number one is posted. We'll see you soon. Bye.